welcome back. Uh, now we are going to uh, take the individual uh, antimicrobial compounds and discuss their chemistry and biochemistry. We will just recapitulate, we will start with recapitulating these compounds which I think we have already discussed. This is the structure of trimethoprim, an antimalarial uh, compound. This is a sulfone, para amino uh, phenyl sulfone that is an anti leprosy compound. This is sulfomethoxazole, which is an antibacterial compound. You see, <coughs> here it is written bacteriostatic. That means, these are antibacterial agents which inhibit the cell growth are sorry. Why these are anti, uh, uh, bacteriostatic? Because these are the compounds which stops the folic acid biosynthesis. Okay. Folic acid biosynthesis which is a one carbon transfer remember it is uh, nothing but conversion a very important conversion that is uracil to thymine and if that was ultimately that is the consequence of uh, perturbing the folic acid biosynthesis. So, one of these compound is like sulfomethoxazole or this anti leprosy compounds. Uh, this is little bit different because that inhibits the DHFR of, uh, of microorganisms okay, DHFR dihydrofolate reductase and these two are nothing but you can write them as SO2 NR. So, para amino SO2 and then NR we have told them at that he told you at that time that it is that it mimics the para amino benzoic acid which is a component of the folic acid. Okay. So, para amino benzoic acid has to be incorporated into a, a, a tyridine nucleus which is a dihydroteridine nucleus. If you remember go back to your uh, go back to your earlier notes it is the 7 8 dihydroteridine that is formed. So, that reacts with this para amino benzoic acid and the enzyme that uh, does that is called a steroid synthase. Now, this steroid synthase must be such that there is a hydrogen body it goes to the active site of the enzyme and this is the NH 2 which forms a hydrogen bond with some amino acid here. There is a aromatic amino acid somewhere here it must be uh, so that there is pi stacking interaction with this benzene ring and then there must be some ionic interactions that means there must be some uh, sites like NH 3 plus which forms an electrostatic interaction here. So, the para amino benzene sulfonamide that you see the similar structure. So, NH 2 is there that forms this hydrogen bond this is the aromatic ring and this is instead of the CO 2 minus you have SO 2 minus. So, that forms the ionic bond. So, this is a very good competitive inhibitor of uh, para amino benzoic acid. These compounds are also called anti metabolite. What is anti metabolite which interferes with the metabolic processes that are uh, that are going inside the that are uh, going inside the microorganism or anything any uh, any species. Okay. And this since this is now inhibiting the incorporation of para amino benzoic acid that means, it disturbs the normal metabolic process. So, this is uh, a very good uh, initially these are very good antibiotics, but today the bacteria has developed resistance against the sulfonamides how by producing more of para amino benzoic acid. And you know that in competitive inhibition if you increase the concentration of the substrate you can overcome the inhibition that is the uh, nature of competitive inhibition. So, now sulfonamides are virtually not working against any microbial infection. Now, let us come to the chemistry of penicillin. So, this is the structure of penicillin. What is the pharmacophore of penicillin? Now, pharmacophore is the is the entity molecular entity that is present in the entire molecule uh, somewhere it is present and that is essential or which that part is interacting with the uh, with some uh, enzyme or any nucleic acid uh, whatever is the target. So, basically what we are saying that if I have a big molecule like this and if I see that only this part is the one which is interacting with the enzyme then this part is what is called the pharmacophore. Okay. So, the pharmacophore of penicillin is 
is this which is uh, put as light green, okay, a light uh, blue, bluish. Uh, so, that part is the pharmacophore. Now, this part has what is there? There are two rings which are fused to one another. Okay. Now, this is called a beta lactam ring and this is called a thiazolidine ring that is the name of the heterocycle. This is beta lactam fused to a thiazole okay. and then there is a substituent amine here which is acylated. So, you have an acyl side chain here and uh, you have a carboxy also alpha carboxy group uh, attached to the thiazolidine ring. Okay. Now, this is the uh, minimum so, any penicillin the variation that we see in different penicillins you know that the names of different penicillins ampicillin, amoxicillin, cloxacillin, methicillin whatever name any penicillin the difference is only in this R group. So, you have different R groups and you get different types of penicillins. Okay. Initial penicillin that was made was benzyl penicillin called penicillin G and another one was called penicillin V that was phenoxymethyl penicillin, phenoxymethyl penicillin also called penicillin V. In fact, penicillin G is still available in the market, it is usually now uh, treated for rheumatoid arthritis that is the uh, that is usually the compound this benzyl penicillin that is used otherwise for bac other bacterial infections a respiratory infection uh, usually. Uh, this penicillin G is not used, but historically these two compounds are important because the first penicillins that were introduced into the market were this benzyl penicillin and this penicillin V, penicillin G and penicillin V. Okay. This is what is the, uh, we will talk about this biosynthesis later on because we know that penicillin is made by the microorganism that is why this is an antibiotic. Okay. Now, that means the microorganism has a biosynthetic machinery to make this penicillin enzyme systems which starts from a building block and join them together and finally, get to the penicillin. Uh, we will discuss this uh, formation of penicillin in a much elaborate way, but here just to let you know that it is a very simple these three simple building blocks which ultimately combine and make the penicillin. One is this is a variable uh, amino acid, this is cysteine and this is valine. So, cysteine, valine and another amino acid which I am not naming it actually this amino acid is alpha amino this is not a protein amino acid this is alpha amino adipic acid alpha amino adipic acid. So, basically this alpha amino adipic acid and uh, through this alpha amino adipic acid combined with cysteine and that also combines with valine to make what will be a tripeptide what will be called a tripeptide and that tripeptide uh, then cyclizes and you have this uh, penicillin molecule. Remember the alpha amino adipic acid it is the carboxy that is the uh, epsilon carboxylic acid that reacts with cysteine and cysteine reacts with valine to make a tripeptide which will be called A C V adipoyl cysteinyl valine that cyclizes to give the penicillin. Okay. Now, another important interesting aspect of the structure of penicillin be, uh, be for which the activity is there is the reactivity of this beta lactam ring reactivity. Reactivity to what? Reactivity towards nucleophile because amide carbonyls are susceptible to ring opening okay, uh, to hydrolysis. Like if you take an amide RCO NH 2 and if you heat it with alkali you get RCO 2 H or RCO 2 NA because you are using alkali 
say NaOH and you get ammonia and if it is NHR then you will get RNH2 the amine. Okay. But in order to do this you have to heat it with alkali, it is not a very it means it does not work at room temperature or if you want to do it at room temperature then you have to wait for months and months so that the hydrolysis will take place. Okay. Now, why amides are difficult to hydrolyze because of this resonance the nitrogen lone pair is resonating with the carbonyl. So, you have a resonating structure where the nitrogen is planar and this bond is also becoming very rigid. So, that will not allow you allow the things to rotate this exactly what happens in peptide bonds. When we discuss the structure of peptides we have seen that the amide bond is uh, this nitrogen carbon has a significant amount of double bond character and that stops the rotation. Okay. So, this is the, the normal amides and because of this resonance this carbon is losing the electrophilicity because if there is a only carbonyl then the oxygen will pull the electrons towards itself by electromagnetic effect and then this will have a positive charge, but here nitrogen lone pair is there that will neutralize the positive charge on the carbon. So, nucleophilic attack on the amide is or requires higher temperature okay, or higher activation energy is required. On the other hand in penicillin what happens this is the structure of penicillin see it is not a planar molecule it is like this is a planar beta lactam ring a four membered ring is almost nearly planar and then you have this five membered ring which is going upwards. So, basically it is like a open open book type. So, basically something like this. So, it is something like this. So, this is so this is the five member ring sulfur, this is the carbonyl, this is the nitrogen. So, it is a it is a like open book type of or a butterfly type of structure. Okay. So, it is not a planar molecule that is number 1. Number 2 is this whatever in the amide in, in, in acyclic amides this lone pair is code is entering into resonance with the carbonyl that is actually not permissible in beta lactam. Because if the lone pair participates in resonance then what happens this become the angle becomes 120 that means the angle strain in a four membered ring the angle is virtually 90. So, that means you are already you have already deviated the angle quite much from from 90 you are deviating uh, is 90, but actually the hybridization demands that these have to be 109.5 degree. Okay. So, if you have a resonance where the angle is still increasing further here, so that will not be allowed. So, this will be this will be flat and, in, and it will be highly strained. So, this type of resonance is almost not possible and that is reflected if you take the IR spectroscopy of penicillin, then you will see that what happens in IR spectroscopy if there is resonance then the carbonyl stretching frequency will be low and if there is no resonance the carbonyl stretching frequency will be higher. So, in penicillin the carbonyl stretching frequency is about 1770 centimeter inverse on the other hand in the amide carbonyl it is 600 uh, 1680 around that value. So, it is that shows that it is a very highly strained molecule and the carbonyl carbon is uh, the carbonyl is uh, is virtually present as a separate carbonyl there is no such assistance from the nitrogen lone pair adjacent. So, that makes its carbon highly electrophilic that means that makes its carbon highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So, that is the basic uh, uh, that is the one of the major reason why this molecule acts as an antibacterial agent. Okay. We will slowly go back to that, but again before I uh, go into any further I, I, I should tell you that whatever mechanism that we are discussing today that this is the way the penicillins work that is what is called post facto post facto analysis. That means, it is after the fact 
after the fact that penicillin is a very good antibiotic. It kills uh, the microbes, it, ki it kills the bacteria and once that is known at that time Fleming or Flory or Chain or Dorothy Hodgkins or even Woodward, Robert Robinson, they did not know how it is working. Only thing they know that it is a very good antibacterial agent. Okay. Of course, that ultimately matters because ultimately it matters we do not uh, some people might say that I do not care how does it work, but it is working nicely to kill to uh, cure me of the infection. Okay. But however, uh, science can stop there science has to progress we have to know how penicillins work because until we know that we cannot devise or rationally design new antibiotics based on the mechanism of action of penicillin because today we are living in an era where most of the earlier penicillins are not working. So, now how to make new penicillins new type of antibiotics that depends how is our understanding of the antibacterial activity of penicillin. Okay. So, that is why so just to make it uh, very clear that whatever we are discussing now this is after the discovery of penicillin after the penicillin entered into the market. So, the mechanism was uh, established. Okay. Now, what is the mechanism? I told you one thing that penicillins work against the bacterial cell wall. Okay. So, we have to now know what is what is a cell wall in a bacteria that is so unique that is so unique for them. Okay. Cell wall I told you it is a rigid wall that protects the cytosolic uh, material inside the bacteria. Now, there are two kinds of bacteria one is gram positive another is gram negative. Okay. So, gram positive uh, bacteria has a thick cell wall structure and it is written peptidoglycan. What is a peptidoglycan? Peptidoglycan means you have peptide units as well as glycan units. Glycan means sugar units. Okay. So, basically you have carbohydrate which is the part of the sugar and you have peptide. So, that is why this is called peptidoglycan. So, the one thing that the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan that is number 1. Number 2 is that in gram positive you have the peptidoglycan as the outer wall and then you have the membrane like we have this lipid bilayer membrane and in that membrane there will be definitely channels because bacteria has to communicate with the outside world some molecules will come inside the uh, uh, there are carrier molecules which will carry the outside whatever is needed. So, this is the cytosol on this side cytosol. So, some molecules are needed water is so it has to be controlled like ion channels I told you. So, ion channels ligand gated ion channels or these things. So, bacteria has this pores also. So, th through that pores materials enter or go out. Okay. So, this is your peptidoglycan and that is quite thick in gram positive bacteria. In gram negative bacteria what happens first it is an outer membrane which is a lipid bilayer and then there is this pores these are called porine channels, porine channels. Okay. Then there is a much thinner peptidoglycan that was earlier for the gram positive it is outside. Then little bit inner that means this is protected by a lipid bilayer membrane and then you have another membrane an inner membrane and then the cytosol. So, there is a distinct difference and you can now say that penicillins work against the gram positive very well because in the gram positive the peptidoglycan is exposed outside. So, penicillin comes and destroys the peptidoglycan, but here the penicillin has to traverse through this first this is the barrier. So, gram negative bacteria then come here these spaces are by the way called periplasmic spaces and these spaces where the peptidoglycan is there. So, then it has to come inside here and then act on the synthesis of the peptidoglycan. So, it will be difficult to kill the gram negative bacteria by this type of mechanism, but anyway let us see what are the other problems in gram negative bacteria. Gram negative bacteria has other sorts of problem 
so, we will discuss that. What is this? Uh, let us inspect it at the molecular level, the peptidoglycan. Okay. Here, this is the schematic diagram. You see, this is one, one sugar unit that is called NAM. What is NAM? That is NAM is N acetyl glucosamine. And then you have another sugar unit which is called NAG. This is called N, I am sorry, N acetyl, I am sorry. NAM is N acetyl, extremely sorry, that is actually N acetyl muramic acid, NAM. This M, this A, and this A. And the other is called NAG. NAG is N acetyl glucosamine. N acetyl glucosamine. So, these are the two sugar units, they are joined one after another NAM, then NAG via glycoside linkages. NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG. So, this way some chains of sugar is there then another chain of sugar is there, then another chain of sugar is there. And each sugar unit, not each sugar, in the each strand of sugar polymer, what you see that in the NAM, N acetyl muramic acid, what happens that there is a peptide which is attached, certainly to one of the hydroxy. So, that is attached, the first amino acid is L alanine, then D glutamic acid, then L lysine, then D alanine and actually there was another d alanine, but by reaction while forming this uh, cell wall one of the d alanine goes out. So, basically we are just uh, we, we are not discussing the, uh, f the, the formation of the, the actually formed this is the structure of the when the matured cell wall is there, but we are discussing just before that before the formation of the matured cell wall, what is the status? The status is like this that it one of these that all these peptide bonds are there or pep amino acids are there. So, this is what a pentapeptide 1, 2, 3, 4 another one before the formation of the matured remember the matured cell wall. We are talking about just before that what was the status? There was 5 amino acids they are hanging from one strand and in adjacent strand there is again the 5 amino acids are hanging from each other. Okay. Now, each, I mean each peptide has a side chain also has a side arm which is reactive arm like this one has a side arm. Then there is another one suppose here which has got a side arm and then there, there this has got a reactive side arm. Now, there will be there will be a reaction between this strand and the side arm. So, there will be a attachment like this, then there will be an attachment like this. See if that happens, then what happens the bacterial the cell becomes very rigid. It is like that if you have lot of see bamboo rods and then you have put it on to make a fence. If you want to do that only putting the putting the uh, these bamboo rods, the bamboo poles will not be sufficient to protect. So, in order to make them very rigid, so what you do? You do this type of what are called cross links to make it very strong. Huh? When you build a house, that is the same thing beam and pillar. So, beam and then pillar you, you, you the and then you join with the horizontal uh, pillars okay. that is to reinforce the structure. So, to reinforce the structure this cross link is required. Okay. So, basically now what we have learned that there is this uh, glycan units glycan polymer that is NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG and NAM, NAG each of these each of these uh, NAM is attached to a pentapeptide and then there is a cross link between the adjacent pentapeptides. Okay. So, we will look at very carefully what are these reactions, how this cross link is formed. 
here it is now uh, uh, written in a little bit better way that uh, n acetyl muramic acid that is basically this one. Let me write the structure of the sugar. So, this is the glycoside linkage, this is glucosamine n acetyl glucosamine means NH, glucosamine means is glucose only the 2 hydroxy is replaced by an amine which is acetylated. So, then you know in glucose what happens this is alpha, then the next one is beta, the third one is this is number 1, this is number 2, this is third, this is number 4 carbon which is alpha and then you have the CH 2 H. So, the when the glycoside is made, it is made between 1 and 4 that means, this is attached to another sugar. Okay. So, this is your NAG N acetyl glucosamine and what is your name? The name is like this. NHAC N acetyl that is there and this is attached to the, the glycoside another uh, sugar unit and here the weight is beta. So, that is attached to uh, a lactic acid like this and this is CH 2 H. So, this is see what is lactic acid C H 3 C O 2 H O H. So, it has it is attached by a by a ethereal linkage ethyl linkage. Okay. So, this is your NAG a uh, sorry this is your NAM and this is your NAG. So, this is how it is done. So, this is NAG attached to a NAM, NAM has a carboxy which is attached via a lactate side chain and this carboxy is the one which is used to make the peptide. So, it will be CO, then there will be alanine, then there will be glutamic acid, then there will be lysine, then there will be alanine, there will be alanine. Okay. So, I hope this is clear. Now, that will be we are not writing the name NAM just we will write the structure we will write the name. So, name every name is attached to alanine glutamic acid lysine alanine alanine. Okay. Also look at the configuration of this alanine this is L alanine this is D glutamic acid I told you that in bacteria only that there are the D group D amino acids are present where from this D amino acids come by isomerization of the L amino acids. Okay. So, then L lysine, but this lysine the, the side chain amine is attached to glycine 5 glycine units. Okay. So, what is the end point here is it the N terminus or C terminus that we have to be clear now. See this is your lysine ends up with NH, then you have a glycine. So, NHCO glycine, then glycine ends up with NH2 that is attached to another glycine. So, NHCO. So, if that be the case you can say that it ends up with an amine. Okay. That is very clear if somebody says this is amine, but you have to make yourself convinced. Yes, because lysine starts with NH. So, NHCO then ultimately is does not end up with a CO 2 H it ends up with a NH 2 and then you have D alanine D alanine and in the adjacent NAM NAG you have the same chain alanine D glutamic acid lysine that has got penta penta glycine D alanine D alanine. Okay. Now, the reaction that takes place in cross linking is I told you this side chain reacts with the primary chain that is hanging here. Now, this D alanine D alanine again you have to be sure that what ends up here you started with NAM, NAM is this one. So, this is CO then NH. So, alanine NH is on this side and CO 2 H on this side that means, this will end up with a CO 2 H. So, this is a carboxy end here okay. and in between D alanine D alanine you have a CO NH. Okay. So, you have a D alanine here, you have a D alanine here, 
that is the end point and this is the CO 2 H and this D alanine is attached to lysine and all these things. So, now the reaction that takes place is basically that this N H 2 that the glycine N H 2 attacks the attacks this bond this amide bond okay, and kicks out the last D alanine. So, what will happen now? This is the chain that is now cross linked with this chain and the result is nothing but I can simplify it. Suppose, this is glycine that has got N H 2 and then you have D alanine D alanine. So, D alanine then C O then N H then D alanine and this was going to the top attached to N M and now the reaction is basically this is attacking here that goes out that makes a cross link, but the reaction is what is the nature of this reaction how can you classify this reaction. This is nothing but look at this D alanine this was connected by a by another amino acid D alanine earlier. Now, what you are doing you are replacing this D alanine and replaced by what is glycine. So, this can be called a trans amination a trans peptidation reaction it is not trans amination amine is only amine N H, but this is called trans peptidation that means your peptide was having another amino acid that is replaced by a new amino acid. Okay. So, what is trans peptidation that if you have a peptide like this and if you have another amino acid and if you get A C plus B that is a trans peptidation these are all amino acids. Okay. So, this peptide bond is replaced by a new peptide bond. So, that is why this is called trans peptidase. So, there is an enzyme to do this otherwise this reaction will not take place. This enzyme is a serine based enzyme. So, there is an enzyme it is written here enzyme OH. So, initially enzyme OH like chemotrypsin what happens when you hydrolyze a peptide bond you attack the peptide bond with the serine OH replace at that time you break that other amino acid and then this serine is released again when the water comes and attacks. Okay. In this case not water the enzyme attacks the carbonyl forming the tetrahedral intermediate the D alanine leaves and then instead of water now the adjacent glycine amine attacks and releases the serine OH. Okay. I can show it again even better way that basically what we are talking about C O N H D alanine and this is D alanine and on this side there is this glycine N H 2. So, initially the enzyme which is having a serine O H that attacks here forms the tetrahedral intermediate. So, D alanine uh, C O minus and then N H then D alanine and this is the serine enzyme. Now, what will happen? So, there must be some oxyanion hole here which will stabilize this O minus. Now, what will happen? This comes back that goes out. So, D alanine has gone out. So, D alanine and then C O and that is attached to the serine and now the glycine which was waiting for this to happen comes attacks breaks this bond. So, you get the link between the glycine and the D alanine. So, now the biosynthesis of cell wall what happens here the in the look at the workload on the bacteria. The workload on the bacteria is that it has to synthesize the NAM it has to synthesize the NAG and then combine NAM and NAG form the glycoside bond and make the polymer make another uh, polymer set of polymer another set. So, all these rods which are made up of or layers which are made up of NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG and then it has to also do this uh, neuramic, muramic acid, muramic, uh, acid N acetyl muramic acid that is also it has to make and then form the peptide all these. And this is the last reaction in the synthesis of the bacterial cell wall this is the last reaction. So, the last reaction where this trans peptidation reaction that is somehow 
stopped by penicillin. So, how penicillin works? It stops the enzyme transpeptidase from working against, but it is a beautiful uh, way to really harass the bacteria, because you are not killing the bacteria or stopping the bacteria from the very beginning. You have done enormous amount of work, you have prepared for an exam uh, reading 24 hours a day and on the final day you could not answer anything, because the questions are so hard. Okay. So, basically that is the case, the bacteria has worked to make all the cell walls, all the components assembled together, the last one, okay. the last one like in the marriage ceremony, if the priest does not arrive, the ceremony cannot take place. So, it is basically that at the terminal point you are stopping the bacteria from forming the cell wall and if that cross link does not happen, the cell wall is very fragile, water will now go through the cell wall inside the cell and then the cell burst open and that is what is called lysis. Now, the question is why penicillin will stop this, will stop this back, uh, cell wall formation at the terminal stage, what is the similarity of the reaction or the structure. Okay. But before that I may mention that this uh, the structure that I gave you that lysine then glycine, glycine, glycine this is usually present in gram positive bacteria. In gram negative bacteria like E. coli this lysine is replaced by an amino acid which is called diamino pimelic acid, diamino pimelic acid. Pimelic acid is by the way what is pimelic acid, oxalic acid, malonic acid, Ohm's gap if you remember P is the C 7. So, you have CO 2 H, N H 2 and then all this and then another N H 2 and CO 2 H. So, this diamino pimelic acid you might see in different books that this is diamino pimelic acid, but the mechanism is same. In that case the amine side chain of the diamino pimelic acid uh, will react with that. And incidentally, this is the mesodiamino pimelic acid, because this has got two stereogenic centers, if they are of opposite configuration that becomes meso. Okay. It is the mesodiamino pimelic acid in E. coli that does this job, otherwise in gram positive what we have discussed is gram positive bacteria. The glycine is the one, this is normally written in the books, in the medicinal chemistry books, but the mechanism remains the same. Now, let us see what is it, it is there no? mesodiamino pimelic acid or lysine any one of this, but lysine then penta pep that penta glycine has to be attached it is through the glycine side chain. This is the mechanism which I have already uh, discussed now let us see penicillin is a penicillin is an inhibitor of this transpeptidase cross linking reaction. Okay. Transpeptidase reaction takes place if this is the transpeptidase enzyme, then the uh, this is the D alanine, D alanine. Remember, this is D, so that has to be configuration of R. So, 1, 2, 3, so that is R, and this is also uh, 1, 2, 3, but the methyl is alpha, so this is also R. So, this is the D alanine, D alanine. So, what is the reaction? The serine which Remember why this D alanine is, is binding to the enzyme, there must be a uh, positively charged species which is like lysine, so that forms the salt bridge. So, this goes and binds and then the serine, serine which attacks forms the acyl enzyme complex and from the other peptide chain which is the glycine 1, now the glycine NH 2 attacks and forms the this is the cross link. Okay. In case of penicillin, it has been found that instead of D alanine, D alanine, penicillin comes, the bacteria thinks that penicillin is my substrate and penicillin comes and the serine, it has got this CO 2 minus that binds with the lysine and this which now, this is a very reactive, uh, very reactive uh, ring which can open up immediately. So, which attacks and via the uh, formation of the tetradal intermediate, it goes back and kicks out this. So, this is the situation now. So, the serine is acylated by the penicillin and what happens now the serine can be regenerated provided water comes 
and breaks this bond. So, that the enzyme is freed again, but this is a very slow reaction. This is a very slow reaction. If it is a very slow reaction, by the time this hydrolysis happens, the bacterial cell is already lysed. Okay. Bacterial cell will not wait for such time that the enzyme is free again. So, basically, essentially, it is an active site directed irreversible inhibition. Active site directed irreversible in inhibition. What is active site directed? That it goes straight away and attacks the enzyme that what happens it attacks the enzyme and stays there. Formation of covalent bond means it is a irreversible enzyme and then after the reaction nothing no more further any further reaction has not happened to produce a more reactive species that is not happened. So, this is nothing but an active site directed irreversible inhibition A S D I I. Okay. So, A S D I I. I. Okay. So, this is the mechanism this is written here water attacking this is blocked water cannot come and hydrolyze this one. Okay. So, that is the mechanism of penicillin. Now, the last thing that is remaining is why penicillin is so selective why bacteria thinks that this is my substrate. Now, compare the two structures this is the structure again another way of writing d alanine d alanine see this is the methyl you see this is this has to be R configuration 1, 2, 3 because the methyl is alpha. So, it has to be R now. So, that is D and this is also D. So, I have written this structure the D alanine D alanine in this fashion and look at the structure of penicillin. See this is same if you look at the backbone only you will see the similarity of penicillin and D alanine D alanine. Okay. So, that means, penicillin mimics 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 is only C I think no? mimics mimics D alanine D alanine in structure it is only D A it is not L L if it is L L bacteria had used L L penicillin would have been effective ineffective the con the the stereochemistry the stereochemistry as well as this stereochemistry is also matching. Only thing penicillin has some extra, extra is that this part is what is the extra. So, it is even better, it is a conformationally constrained system which resembles D alanine D alanine. Of course, D alanine D alanine must be having different types of conformation, but in one conformation you see that it resembles the penicillin. So, now, in short what is the mechanism of action of penicillin? It stops, it is a transpeptidase inhibitor. What is transpeptidase? Transpeptidase is a indispensable enzyme to make cell wall. What it does? The terminal step again I repeat that the bacteria has made the cell wall premature cell wall is like making premature or immature mRNA and then if suppose you stop now the slicing the splicing sorry the splicing with the spliceosome. So, your mRNA will be ineffective. So, similarly uh, it makes the uh, everything except the cross linking. So, at the cross linking terminal cross linking that is inhibited and that is how penicillin works. Okay. I think that is all for today for this session uh, we will talk about the bacterial resistance uh, in the next uh, session. Thank you.